What do you do when your paintings just feel dead? When perfectionism stops you from even starting, when you're out of ideas, when you just don't know what to paint? Or when the joy you used to have in the studio just seems to have evaporated? You've got to figure out how to make the work that truly sparks your curiosity. My name is Chelsea, and this is what I do. I am a full-time professional oil painter, and I mentor artists who want to master expressive portraiture. For more information on how I can help you, check out the links in the description to find out more and apply to see if we are a fit to work together. But right now, I want to talk about the painting at hand. I'm going to kick off by going over my materials for this piece, and then I want to talk about the why and how of creating this painting. First things first, for this painting I am using titanium white, cad lemon, cad yellow pale, cad yellow deep, cad orange, cad red, and transparent oxide red. The brands aren't particularly important here, nor is it important to have every color within the cadmium range that I just listed. I just happen to have these for convenience. I'm painting on a Raymar C13 double primed panel, and I'm using primarily rosemary ivory filberts as my brushes. And while I do use Gamsol here and there in this painting to erase, my primary medium throughout is simply oleogel. So I have oleogel mixed into my paint mixture from the very beginning of this piece all the way to the very end. I wanted to share this particular painting with you, or more to the point, I wanted to paint this because painting might be my job, but that's no reason not to have fun with it. And sometimes, counterintuitively, we learn the most when we think that we're simply playing. And that's really what the core of this video is all about. And that's what happened here. I wanted to create this painting of Aziraphale from Good Omens, mostly because I've just been thinking about this show ever since the new season came out. I found a reference that had really bold light and shadow, and then I dove in, focusing first and foremost on the painting technique that I thought would be the most rewarding to explore. I wanted to block in the core impression or gesture of his features. I wanted the calligraphy in mark making to matter. I wanted this to look beautiful and expressive from the very first marks all the way to the final product. And honestly, I wanted to experiment with this idea of doing a value study using an analogous range of color. This for me turned out to be the ideal recipe for making a painting that just, to me, feels alive and I felt alive creating it. I genuinely enjoyed the focus on the mark making here. I really appreciated just being able to essentially make some fan art <laughs> and not having to stress too much over the composition. I especially appreciated not really having this piece be intended to become some magnum opus like maybe I would feel with other pieces. Rather, this was simply meant to be play. And honestly, focusing on the value side of things, but doing it through, you know, these yellows and oranges and reds and browns, it was really fun. It was just that ideal amount of challenge that I think helped me get into flow in this piece. If you aren't familiar with this concept of flow, what it is in short, especially when it comes to painting, is really tackling projects that are at this ideal threshold of just challenging enough to really engage you, but doable enough that you aren't going to feel defeated in the process. What results is often this feeling of everything coming into place. You are challenged just enough to feel genuinely engaged, but things are just coming, often without any feeling of resistance. And I think that feeling of resistance is often what yields us to feel disillusioned or bored or burnt out with our painting practices. And it turns out this is really common. In fact, one of the most common questions that I get from painters is, Chelsea, I just haven't wanted to create anything in a while, but this is what I want to do. What's the matter with me? What do I do to fix this? And when an artist comes to me with this concern, what I always tell them is that first and foremost, we need to focus on rediscovering that sense of joy or curiosity or that spark within our painting practice. It's essential that we put on hold things like really challenging ourselves or mastering our craft or working on really serious things. And you might say, Chelsea, that completely contradicts the thing that you just said before about entering into flow. But to clarify, I think what often gets artists feeling stuck is one, not having a clear goal. And so you wind up just kind of spinning your wheels and feeling like you're not making meaningful progress in a direction that excites you. 
The next thing that I think can happen is actually the opposite of this, where you have a really clear goal and you are engaged in really rigorous study in order to help you to become the artist you want to be. This can really help you to make big strides towards your goal, but what I find can really easily happen in this scenario is that we are so preoccupied with the idea of improving, and we're constantly comparing ourselves with the masters that we want to emulate, that we constantly feel like we're falling short, rather than simply enjoying where we are. And that's what this painting is all about. It's about enjoying where I am. And this is what I recommend to the artists who feel stuck in this scenario. We need to figure out how to help you enjoy a painting that you can make exactly where you are right now. You know, reconnect to the kinds of paintings that you made earlier in your journey that simply felt fun, that felt like you, that weren't about being the best or improving or becoming a master. And counterintuitively, I think when we take this pressure off and we find that sweet spot of something that feels low stakes, but interesting, just like this painting did, that's often when I think we actually feel the most growth. So here are some of the moments in this particular painting where I felt genuinely in flow. The first piece really came from the block-in. If you go back to the beginning of this video, you will note that I am really just trying to evoke facial features. Not getting too hung up on measuring, I'm definitely not getting tight, I'm simply trying to capture the overall impression of Aziraphale here. More to the point, I'm trying to capture that impression in a way where it's going to read from across the room. Getting into like the details of the eye and the intricacies of the anatomy of the face, that's not really going to read. But if I just have this really squinted down, blurred out vision of his face, and that matches what I would see from across the room when I look at this painting, that's how I know I've really succeeded in accomplishing what I set out to here. And I think the other side of this is that I really wanted all of those marks to be, in and of themselves, beautiful. You know, I wanted them to feel energetic, I wanted them to feel interesting, I wanted to create the kinds of texture with my brush marks that would make you want to come up to the painting and look closer. And that's true whether we're talking about a lot of the block-in marks that I make at the beginning, and it's also true for a lot of the juicier, more wet, thick, impasto-heavy marks that I make toward the end. To really succeed in this, it was essential that I think from dark to light here. Now, this is one school of thought with painting, um, and in my case, this works well because I am working on a white canvas. So I can let the white of the canvas represent, in the very early stages, all of my light and middle values, or basically anything except the darkest darks. And then once I put in those darkest darks, I can just keep putting in successive passes of value that are lighter and lighter. Now, I do not do this perfectly, um, especially watching this back, I realize there are places where I made some errors in judgment around this, but I also realized it in the moment. And it helped me to clarify that in order to paint like this, I really can have a recipe for success that I can follow to be able to create the kinds of pieces that I wanna create over and over again. And that was really encouraging and exciting. And I think one of the keys to be able to really enjoy your work is to not be constantly guessing, but rather to have a recipe for success that is reliable and something that gives you a sense of structure inside of which you can really play. So if my block-in was really focused on gesture and then going in with those darkest darks, and then as I build the painting out, I go in with successively lighter and lighter passes, it's important that I talk about the color piece of this. And that means not necessarily that I actually start with the darkest color that I could mix, which is a combination of transparent oxide red and cadmium red. I actually started off this piece with some middle values and letting those be, or at least letting them represent, the darkest darks. And as I would progress through the painting, it means that I would have this really high key image and I can always darken the darks as I go. The other consideration here is that I am not thinking about this value painting as simply being orange with white or with brown or black added. That would very quickly yield a stale, muddy painting. 
But instead, as my value is shifting, I want to think of the hue shifting as well. So I might start with an orange, and as it deepens, I can go into a red or even a reddish brown. And as it lightens, I can pass through a really warm yellow to a really neon yellow. And then finally, I can have some yellows and oranges with white mixed in just to kill the intensity of all of that chroma that we see in this painting. And the result is one that I'm really excited by. And maybe as importantly, I'm really proud of it. But what stands out to me the most is that I can't wait to take some of these techniques into the next painting I create, which really needs to be our goal. If a painting can accomplish anything for us, I think the best thing it can accomplish is really making you excited to get into the next one. And ultimately, this is how we create a sustainable journey toward mastery or a sustainable career as painters. Again, if you want more help on this journey or you want to make sure that you really do reach your biggest painting goals, I have more information down in the description to find out more about my mentorships, as well as a link to apply to see if we are a fit to work together. I look forward to hearing from you and until next time, happy painting.